Hi everybody, um, just an update, I'm back from San Diego, um, and I just finished watching my deliverance video again, and it's like writing down what was said to me, and just, uh, I just feel God's presence so much right now, um, just thanking God for everything that he did this weekend. I mean, he literally just took care of everything for me and my boys to go out there. Um, I had planned on going. I said, you know, God, I'm going to go. Uh, if I sleep in my car or whatever, like, I'm just going to go. Hi, Rachel. What are you doing? <coughs> oh, you want attention? You want to? Oh, okay, just hold on. I'm making a video. Um, I, uh, yeah, I'm making a video. I gotta get my love when I can get it. This boy, he be, he be hiding from me sometimes. Um, he missed us. We were gone for three days, so they earned, oh, We do like them. <laughs> we do like these things called humans. Um, anyways, um, mm, I love you too. I love you too. Yeah. Mm. Razzle. <laughs> Try to make a video. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, so. Uh, Jesus set me free from a number, another demon yesterday in front of Daniel Adams. And then after I was sitting there and I had felt, I was feeling, I, I, at first, okay, so when I was set free, um, I believe it was a python spirit, um, because when I was laying on the ground, like I was like doing this like weird shake thing anyways. <clears throat> and when I got set free, my leg all the way up my body up to my head like was hurting like it felt like it had been attached to my leg for a long time um you know in the bible where it says that um the word of god separates between the bone and the marrow like it was like in between the bone and the marrow was so sore like if something was just ripped out um it was like a a good sore like you know like if you work out really good but like i don't know how to explain it because it was like in like it was in between the bone and the marrow like uh, it was just so surreal but um i had gotten a, a demon cast out um about a couple months ago and i've been i've been going through deliverance um I've been going through deliverance since July when I went to um, a Kevin Zadai conference in Arizona. I saved up and we went and God took care of us that time too because, yeah, it, anyways. But, um, so I went and, and literally the last day um, something finally broke and, um, I cried like I needed to cry for years. Um, I, I I guess I just held on to it. My cat keeps rubbing on my phone. Um, and so I've been literally going sent through deliverance since July. And um, I got delivered through Catherine Crick's ministry a couple months ago. And then um, I've been getting delivered from stuff Um over my Bible study, uh, we fast every Monday and Thursday, and literally every Bible study, I'm getting delivered from something. Um, just, I I don't even know how much I had, you know, because I, um, since as long as I could remember, I knew about sex, and I knew about, um... A lot of things that a little child shouldn't know about, and I was doing them and um, addicted to porn at a very young age. Um, 
anger, rage, um, wanted to die, um, self-worth, self-doubt, self-hatred, um, poverty, homelessness, attracting the wrong relationships, um, started prostituting at 16 years old and on the streets doing drugs, um, had my son at 20, had a miscarriage before that. There's been through so much. And if you can imagine, like, just being a prostitute in itself, um, just all the things that I, I took in. Um, there's a meme out there that, like, yeah, condoms may protect you from um, sexually transmitted diseases, but they don't check... Ch uh, <laughs> He's biting my phone. <laughs> they don't protect you from sexually transmitted demons. Anyways, I thought that was funny. But, um, <clears throat> so, God is just so good. And, um, so I could only imagine how much stuff I got. And then, you know, saying bad words over myself and things like that. So, <clears throat> anyways, after I got delivered from that big one, I was sitting down. It had been about a mm, good hour and a half. And I was sitting down, and this lady walks up to me, and she's like, Hey, um, Jesus just wanted me to tell you or remind you <laughs> how much I love you, you know? And I was still just trying to process, like, what had just happened, and and I could still feel something. I could still... Uh, I was like, man, like, I just want to be all the way free, like... And I was just so thankful that the strong man, when a, another strong man was gone, but um yeah so anyways um i knew something was going on and when she started praying for me she goes she goes uh do you have any pain in your body and i was like actually yeah when you started praying for me my stomach started just balling up like just hurting and she's like, okay. And she's like, she's like, that's another demon. Let's get it out, right? And so when she started, oh my gosh, it was like so much. I just was on the ground and I was just coughing and coughing. It was like something was choking me and I was coughing and coughing. And um, it was just like one after another, after another, after another, after another. It was like so many were just hiding and, um, when I was laying there, I was just like, God, like, shine your light on this demon. Shine your light on this demon. Like, I don't want these to hide. And it was like they were trying to hide, and they were moving to different parts of my body. I could literally feel it. Like, it was no joke. Like, I could literally, like, feel these demons hiding. And I was just, like, telling her, like, okay, now I feel something over here. And so, anyways, it was, by the end of it, I was like... God, like, I don't know if I could take any more of this. Like, I don't even know how long it was. Maybe, like, 30 minutes. I don't even know. But just so much were coming out, coming out, coming out. My voice is still, like, <laughs> this happened on Saturday. We're on Monday afternoon. And my throat is still just, like, whew, from all of them. And then I was burping some up, and I was throwing some up, and I was, it was just a lot. Um, and um, so it got to a point where I was like, I feel like I kind of, I don't know, I was just like, I can't, I don't think I can take any more of this right now. Um, and um, I don't know. A part of me regrets it saying that, but um, it was just so much like, and um, then my son comes over, Josiah, and um, she starts praying for him, and um. He just, he starts manifesting. 
And um, he starts coughing. Basically just going through it. But, and so there were screams in there too. And um, I'm just so thankful, thankful to God. And um, God kept giving me word of knowledge, word of knowledge of what was tormenting him. And, um, it was like any time I would mention, it was like, it would pop in my head after one was gone. It would pop in my head the next thing. And I would tell the woman and she would just start, she would, as soon as she would say it, my baby would be casting it out. It would be good, cast it out. And, um, just, uh, you know, <coughs> <clears throat> when you get demons cast out it's not a joke like it hurts too cause it's like they're almost connected to you and so just to see my baby that he was being tormented by all those things <laughs> and um for him to be set free <laughs> he had spirit of death of abortion, of abandonment, of fear, of lack, feeling like he wasn't enough. He had anxiety, so many things. And, um, just God is so good, you know. And then, um, after that, uh, you know, we were all exhausted. Uh, Josiah could barely walk. Matthew had to help him walk. I could barely walk. <laughs> um, Isaiah was so tired. We had been there. We, you know, he's a toddler and he's been running around. And so we were all tired. So we went back and to the hotel and we took a little break kids had a snack Isaiah fell asleep in the car ride thank god got something to eat and um I started feeling like this tightness in my jaw like I would normally feel that was like the one that would manifest the most and so I was like oh man you know and um just like when I would talk about God's goodness or read the bible or like whatever so I was like, oh, man, right? So on the way, when we were getting into the car, we ran into some people that went to Sid Canoe Church where the revival, who hosted the revival, and it was at on Friday night. And we were sitting next to them. It was a couple and their baby, and she was pregnant and beautiful. And, uh, and um, I said, thank you so much, you know, and I was saying bye. And they were like, hey, you should come. Are you going to? are you off? Are you like headed home? I said, no, we're going to stay another night. And they're like, Oh, you should come tomorrow to church. And, and I was like, you know what? Like they were like, we might have a special guest. And I said, Oh, okay. I said, so I said, I'll ask my friend. And, um, so I asked Yolanda and she said, yes. So we ended up, Oh shoot. I dropped my phone. So we ended up going and, um, and Daniel was there, and, okay, this church, the fire and the glory of God on a Sunday service was lit. I mean, during worship, I was like, I never felt this before, okay? Like, I felt God's presence in a way that, you know, you just want to get on your knees, you're just so thankful, right? But I felt God's presence like it was like a weighted blanket on me. And I was like, I can't even stand. Like, I had to lay down flat on my face. Like, it was just so much. Like, his presence, his glory was just so much. I was like, what is this? I had to even ask God. I said, God, what is this? He's like, this is my glory. I said, whoa. <laughs> this is awesome, right? So, anyways, after service... And the music, the worship, the word, it was good. And after service, um, 
Oh, and they had these things. I think they called them omissions. It was basically like de- declaring. And they declared the church, like this whole thing. And it's dope. Like, I was like, man, I want to do this. I want to do this so bad. So, um, yeah, we did that. And then um, at the end, Daniel was praying for people. And I, a part of me, like, was like, man, like, you should be delivered already. Like, like this is crazy how many times you're going to come up here. Da, 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 and, you know, the devil, just the stupidness. And so I go and I'm like, there's still something in here. And he was like, all right. Like, he was just like, he's like, no, this is cool. Like, this happens, you know. Like, he was like, all right, for sure. And then he was about to start praying. And I said, like, my whole jaw is tightened and clenched right now, like, and he's like, okay, for sure, he's like, put your hand on your jaw, he's like, you know what, I'm gonna put my hand on my jaw, on your jaw, he put his hand on his jaw, he's like, all those negative words over, spoken over herself, be gone in the name of Jesus, and I just, I said, whew, and I fell back, now, like, it wasn't like, it wasn't like the power of God hit me so hard that I fell back, it was like God, I could feel God saying, just trust me, right? Just, like, completely trust me. Like, just let yourself completely go, you know? And so when I fell back, it was like I trusted the person behind me, and I fell to the ground, and I just laid there in God's presence, like... And it and it was so funny because he brought me back to the this dream I had where I was wearing um an old Jew and and it's funny because I believe that Sid Canoe is a it it's like a they use like a, a lot of messianic Jewish terms in, in their church and and um I believe Sid Canoe is like a Hebrew word. I'm not really sure. I'm gonna have to do my research on it. It's spelled T S I D K U N U or something like that. Don't quote me. But um and I was laying there and it got reminded me of the dream where I was in the hospital, I was on the operating table and and God was just like operating on me and it was funny because in the dream I was wearing these black business shoes and I was wearing black shoes and I was in a church, which is like a hospital, and I'm laying on the ground. I don't know, just God brought me back to that dream. And I was like, God, I don't want to get up until I feel the fire of God like I did in that dream. <laughs> and um, it was crazy because as soon as I started feeling the fire of God, <sighs> Isaiah came up. <laughs> And I all of a sudden, I feel him jump on me. And I was like, no. <laughs> and I was like, God, um, you know, we'll have to do this another time. And then, he, and then I just felt him say, wait until February. And I said, okay, Lord. So I'm just excited. And I'm being patient. And I'm trusting God with each and every step. And I'm just so thankful for each victory that I win, right? It's a war. This is a battle. And there's victories within the war. Um, and so the war isn't over. And it, it won't be over until we go to heaven, right? But um, at least I'll be done with World War One, if that makes sense. And um, I'm just trusting God and... I just encourage you guys to seek your freedom and and to know that demons are real and God is the truth and he is the authority and he crushes them at his feet. And I'm going to post um, my deliverance. Hopefully I can find both of them and I'll post them in this video so you guys can watch. Um Josiah's was not recorded. I wish it was so much. Um, but we were just like, when it was happening, like we were just so much in awe. And, and of course God was giving me the words of knowledge. So I was just focused on his deliverance. I wasn't focused on anything else. And, um, oh, and he, that day 
when Josiah, when Isaiah came on me on Sunday, um, a lady started praying for him and he got delivered from a couple more things. Um, and so I just see such a difference and a light in him. We're going to be sore for a couple days and I, it's okay. It's life and it's freedom. It's like, you know, like you do a battle. You're, I'm sure you're going to be sore when the battle's over, you know. So, uh, I love you guys. I'm going to post all this on this video. Sorry for the cat interruptions and everything. But this is real. This is raw. This is reality. Like, none of this is staged. Like, you can't fake any of this stuff. God is so awesome, you guys. I'm just so thankful for Jesus in my life. And, um, yeah, God bless you guys. Love you. Bye.
at your past. Amen. Look at your future. Amen. Because when you get to heaven, you ain't going to care about yesterday. Amen. So I'm telling you this. The devil wants to keep you condemned and held back and make you think something's wrong for you because he did something to you. He thinks he wants you to believe he's got some legality over you. He don't have nothing on you. You understand? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prophesy some words over you that were said by Jesus Christ himself. Behold, today is the day of, the salva of salvation. Hello. Behold, I make all things new. Amen. The old has passed away. The new is among you. The new has come. So I release you by the power and authority of Jesus Christ from the bondage of the past. I command the traumas that have haunted you, the things that happened to you as a little girl. Yeah. Now, I'm going to speak to this unclean spirit and things that can mess with you. You listen to me. I know you're there, you little nasty, nasty demon. You're in the presence of the Lord. I'm sent by Jesus Christ. He has sent me to take care of you. Now, listen. Stop yelling at me. Come out of this woman. You know the Bible. You know where you come from. You don't get to live in this woman any longer. I don't care what you're making her think. I don't care where you came from. I don't care who you come through. Your power has been broken and nullified by the blood of Jesus Christ. It says he stepped. He was only bruised by the devil. He bruised his heel because he was too busy stomping you in the ground. So listen to me, you little demon. You're going to come out of her body. You hear me? You're going to go back to the pit. You're going to tell your masters you failed your assignment. And they're going to torment you. Yeah. Yeah. You failed. You failed, demon. You lost. You lost this one. Yeah, you did. You did. Demon, listen to me. Do you want to go back? Of course you don't. Uh, I thought you were tough. I thought you were strong. Now listen, I'm only going to turn the heat up until you leave, so you might as well go on back. says 
He made a display of the devil by crushing his power. Today, the devil has been made null and void. Listen to me. You testify of God's victory in your life. You tell people what Jesus has done for you today. And you set the captives free. You hear me? You have a job to deliver people now. You have a job to go and cast demons out. You are Today you're receiving a new authority. Today you will leave here and the devil will be scared of you. Yes. determined by your mistakes either because it's when we it's when we make those mistakes again and only if we make a mistake we forget we have a lawyer in heaven and what happens is the enemy lives on condemnation find if, if any time in your life you have a moment right where you're going through something find brother and sister be like oh, yeah i'm going through it pray yeah. for me ain't nothing wrong with that don't let it dwell yeah. if you let sin dwell within you it will grow don't let the sin grow. Stay completely transparent. For too long, we, we've been taught in the church. Right. Don't say nothing. Don't do nothing. Mm. And if, you, if you're if you not real, mm. you're a mess. That's a lie, man. That ain't what the church is about. We're in here. We need one another. Amen? Yes. Did you have pain in your body, too?